Is it a little hard to deny that radicals, Islamists, communists, socialists will work together against Israel, against capitalism, and they'll try to work together to overturn stability? Who in the media is telling you this? Who? Name them! Protests become contagious. Can you deny this anymore? They'll cascade. They will sweep the Middle East. Show that picture up in front of New York right now. Tell me what this is. What the hell is this? What is it? It's the unions poking, pushing, prodding. Wow. Welcome back. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he's not going to take it anymore. No, he's not. He's mad as hell. Okay, so um, I've been telling conservatives for about two years that this guy is bad for the movement. Eventually, you know, Richard, the world just comes to me. You know, I'm, I'm always... You're a leading indicator. I, I am. I am. I'm not going to even, I'm not going to even deny that. I am. This guy is losing it before our eyes. He's bad for the conservative movement. He's bad for the Republican Party. He's bad for Fox News. It's that simple. Um, I mean, Mike, he's, we, he is detached. This is a guy in Pete Weiner yesterday, uh, and I'm going to read what Pete wrote, uh, a column he wrote for commentary. But Pete Weiner yesterday, um, who, by the way, was Carl Rove's guy in the White House. Right. His, his, we'll, we'll say he was Rove's brain in the White House. Um, Pete Wayner basically said, enough. He is the most detached person on TV. He is hurting the conservative movement. He is now putting people on that are suggesting that Barack Obama is the Antichrist. This is not good for the Republican Party. This is not good for the conservative movement. This is not good, I will say again, even though Roger, we, we all know, we know Roger. Roger knows what the hell he's doing better than anybody else in cable news. There's, just look at the numbers. But. Even guys over at Fox News have to start thinking, this can't last. He's out of control. What did, uh, have you got Wayner's statement? Yeah, let me read, uh, let, let me read. This is Pete Wayner. Pete Wayner was Coral Rove's guy. A uh, very conservative guy, Pete is. A very thoughtful man. Um, and this is what he had to say about Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck has become the most disturbing personality on cable television. One cannot watch him for any length without being struck by his affinity for conspiracies and for betraying himself as the great decoder of events. Political movements are not just wrong. They are infiltrated by a web of malevolent forces. Others see shadows on the wall. Beck alone sees the men casting them, and we saw that in that clip. The danger when one paints the world in such conspiratorial terms is that it devalues the rational side of politics. It encourages a cast of mind that looks to expose enemies rather than to engage in arguments. Again, something we've talked about on this show for years. Few things, after all, are as they appear. Beyond that, of course, is the sense of impending doom, of the coming apocalypse, of a world being on the edge of calamity. If taken seriously, this has the effect of creating fear, hopelessness, and feelings of helplessness. And Pete Weiner also went on to say this about the impact on the conservative movement. What ought to worry conservatives in particular is that Beck not only has the unusual capacity to discredit virtually every cause he takes up, he also confirms the worst caricatures of the right. What was true before is doubly true today. It looks to me like it's only a matter of time, and I suspect not much time, until he blows apart professionally. If and when that happens, one can only hope that conservatism as a movement will have created enough distance from Beck to mitigate the damage. And the damage is there. And we've talked about it on this show, uh, Richard, uh, when he called the president a racist. I mean, he, he throws bombs out all the time, and it's the conspiracy theories as Robert Wright has suggested in the New York Times, that are the most dangerous because that gets people acting out in, in ways of, uh, that, that, that in the end could hurt. hurt. Hurt politicians, 
hurt hurt other people uh, in the uh, in the political world. It turns people off, and all this is happening at a time when this country faces arguably the most serious domestic and in some cases international challenges it's faced in living memory. So the contrast between what we really need to be talking about and how we need to be talking about it and the sort of clip you just showed, that chasm is frightening for this country. It is not good. You know, w w one, of the, one of the most enjoyable things I used to do covering campaigns was covering Pat's campaigns for president. Yeah. And Pat's a conservative. You'd go to his campaign rallies, you would always, there'd, there'd be some sense of joy in the air. Very, there was no sense of conspiracy in the air. I'm wondering, Pat, you watched that clip with us. I found that deeply disturbing. I wonder what your reaction to it is. Well, I don't agree with what he was saying there, quite obviously. I don't think there's any parallel or direct link or connection between union demonstrators in Wisconsin or New York and what's going on in Tahir Square and places like that. So I don't agree with that. But I do think there's no doubt that, you know, conservatives have a responsibility and a duty to make sure that certain people aren't representing us by what they say. But at the same time, there's another side, which is there's an awful lot of us, including this writer, who've been sort of read out of the responsible argument and said, well, he, don't listen to him. He's not the responsible right. Those of us at Commentary and the Weekly Standard are. So there are two sides to this thing, but I agree with you about that clip. It's disturbing. Hey, we'll be right back.